though the face of rural in the United States has often been like, like a white farmer guy, that is not who lives there. Or I should say it's not the only people who live in rural spaces. There are a lot of people of color, a lot of migrants and immigrants. There's a lot of non-English speaking people. There are women. There are people with disabilities. So add all those layers of possible uh, vectors of bias in a system that we know that have been identified already by researchers, then drop rural on that. What happens? In rural communities, I would say two areas where AI has been touted as being a solution or offering solutions are healthcare and agriculture. Because there's such a lack of physicians in rural spaces and even hospitals in rural spaces, the idea is if you allow AI to help diagnose and, and play a role in connecting people to a physician, then you might be solving that lack of physician or lack of healthcare opportunities out in the rural space. Again, though, rural spaces are not known for having good broadband or Wi-Fi access, then how can you use this very powerful tool that's supposed to be helpful? AI and precision farming have been touted as allowing for agricultural workers, farmers in particular, to have higher yields or more productivity, um, to be able to diagnose plant diseases, to save crops, for example, to basically keep, keep data on things like rain. But then who gets to govern that data? Who gets to own it? Is it proprietary? Does it now belong to the organization that provides the software? And then that data, which could have personally identifying information, then that data gets sold to third parties. So there are people who have to deal with the implications of technology. That's all of us. But then there are people who have to deal with the implications of technology that has not even considered what their needs are and what their values are. And it's not just like about identifying these issues. It's about, can we come up with frameworks for how we want to use artificial intelligence? And then those frameworks will help policymakers create policy that both allows people to use artificial intelligence, but also protects people and communities from the amplification of those biases.